Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life, and today I'll be answering your questions. <laughs> David DeGroot3 from Instagram says, this is from a customer's perspective. What are the best steps to take to vet a school? Well, Dave, if you don't mind me calling you Dave, um, it's pretty simple. Step one is make sure you know what your goals are because your goals are probably one of the most important parts of finding a school for yourself. Um, and then step two is trying to go into as many trial classes as you can. My suggestion, two trial classes a week for a month. So that would be eight total schools. Once you've done that, select the school that works best for you and then attend. Shopping around is one of the surefire ways to make sure that you're getting the service that you want. Tanks by Tristan says, where to draw the line? Catering to customers slash staying true to your martial art. Well, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. You see, what a customer does really well is gives you feedback. The feedback that you might not necessarily want to hear. Whether you like it or not, the customer is telling you something from their perspective, and it's extremely important that you actually listen to what they have to say. You don't have to change your martial art because of what customers are asking you, but what you should be paying attention to in terms of your customer is how it's affecting your bottom line. Are your customers happy with what you're providing, and is there a happy medium in which that you can change things just slightly to make sure that you get people in the door and they stay so that way they can learn your martial art? Kamal SC on Instagram says, why do you think Kempo isn't more popular? Probably because of things like that. Back, boom, back, crack. One, two. Yeah, Shoot it's probably that. Owl Ride the Sky on Instagram says, what's the best way for a martial arts business to market themselves out to the public? There are a lot of different ways to market yourself. One, location, location, location. If you're in something like a strip mall or you're around a busy area, you'll get more foot traffic just by people knowing that you exist. Social media is also free. So making sure that you're using social media to your advantage to bring more leads into your school is important. Also make sure you're using hashtags that are relevant to your area. Don't just use arbitrary ones like jujitsu or karate. Those are going to be fairly white noise. Use things like your area code, your zip code, your state your city, those things will go a long way. One more thing that'll help you out tremendously, business to business. Go to local businesses in your area within a five to 10 mile radius of your particular martial arts school and then offer them a deal. Say, hey, I'll send people your way if you give them a discount. And hey, why don't you send people my way and I'll give them a discount as well and we can work together. Wolf by Design on Instagram says, how do you spot a McDojo for kids classes? To be honest, it's not much different than what you're looking for in vetting a McDojo that is teaching adults. Most martial arts schools teach kids and adults anyway. So know the goals of what you're trying to get your child to achieve within the time that they're there. Understand that most children are going to drop out about a year and a year and a half in, so that's pretty standard. Also, when you go, try to take as many trial classes as you can, so that way you can find a happy medium between what goals you have for your child and if your child's enjoying the class or not. If they're not having fun doing it, chances are good they'll fight you to go, they won't want to go, and they're not going to learn much because they'll be too busy trying to fight you on it. Our Gosha Khan on Instagram says, any good resources on growing a study group or approaching a school to begin one? I'm just going to assume by study group, you mean a group of people to come together to learn martial arts for free as a group. In that case, a lot of martial arts schools have empty space and empty times, and most would be happy to take your money to allow you guys to have a group together. And so I would assume that you guys can pull your money together to be able to study inside a martial arts facility just by asking around and finding if there are any empty time slots that you guys could rent out. If not, the park is always free. Brandon Fish 14 says, can a boxing gym be considered a martial arts school? I'm going to make it short and sweet and just say yes. Aviro Lopez 01 on Instagram says, what would you rather open an Olympic Taekwondo school or an MMA gym or a traditional hardcore Taekwondo gym? Well, seeing as how I don't have a black belt in Taekwondo, <laughs> I would say I don't want to do any of those things. To be honest, I had a school for about four years. I worked for other schools for a very long time. The majority of my time in the martial arts industry, I was teaching or working at a facility. I like doing this and this is what I'm happy doing. So I'd much rather give out advice uh, for people who want to do their own thing than open up a school on my own again. Also, I do martial arts seminars, both business and martial arts. So feel free to hire me. Yeet, yeet. 384 on Instagram says, how much is appropriate to charge for five classes a week, BJJ, an hour to an hour and a half, 
plus open map? Well, that's a hard question because that's gonna be based on a lot of factors, but the big one, your overhead, how much you're charging for your classes should start with how much you have to pay out every month. You're gonna have to pay your rent. You're gonna have to pay for your electric bill. You're gonna have to pay for your insurance. You're gonna have to pay for equipment. You're gonna have to pay for equipment updates. You're gonna have to pay for supplies. You're gonna have to pay employees if you have employees. You get the idea. So if you really wanna know what the rate should be, you should look at what your overhead's gonna be and then try to charge appropriately to make sure that you're actually making some income. Heavy Metal on YouTube says, seen my damn cat. Is that your cat? If not, then no, I have not seen your cat. Lamplight Image on YouTube says, how do you deal with dojo bullies who injure other students? There could be a couple steps here, but the first one is understanding where your position is. Are you a student or are you an instructor? Because those will be handled differently. But I'm gonna assume that you're a student and we'll just go down that path, right? So if you're a student, step one is approach the actual person who's doing it. If they have injured you or you've noticed they've injured other people, to be honest, sometimes people who start martial arts don't necessarily know their own strength or power. Some people are very awkward with their body and it could simply be an accident. So by going to that person and approaching them in a calm manner, in a position of care, not of trying to down them in any way, you might actually get a lot farther with them by just saying, hey man, you're kind of being a little heavy, you know, it makes me uncomfortable, I really don't want to get hurt here, if you could do me a favor, turn it down, that might work. If reasoning doesn't work with them, then the next step would obviously be to talk to somebody who is either a coach or an employee or the owner of the martial arts gym and let them know your concerns and then hopefully they will help you out by handling the situation. If that doesn't work, fuck them. Time to go to a new gym. It's better to go to another gym where you know your safety is put first then go to a gym and understand that they don't care about your safety and there's a possibility that every day you go, you might get seriously injured by somebody who you already knew could do that and the coaching staff did nothing about it. That one guy, Bones on YouTube, asks, have you ever come across something in martial arts that you were certain was BS but turned out to be legit? Yes, I have run across that. To be honest, when I started McDojo Life, I thought that a lot of these people had to be just doing it for fun or a skit or a joke. But the truth is, is that 90% of the things that I post are absolutely 100% real. These people really believe what they're saying, although it's a con and a fraud. Of course, it doesn't work, but they really believe it. And that's pretty scary. Rocco Duraza says, what is your top 10 list of martial arts movies? I'm not going to go through all 10, but I will give you my favorite martial arts movie of all time, which is Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. It's got a lot of nostalgia. I remember loving that movie as a kid. It's always just kind of stuck with me. It's been something that I've enjoyed over the years. You get to see like a young Ernie Reyes Jr. You get to see Ty Mock in there. You get to see, uh, you know, this corny martial arts exploitation film, and I love it. Robert and Lisa ask, what was the most ridiculous McDojo you've seen, and what McDojo had the biggest cult following? Probably the most ridiculous one that I've seen is Detroit Dust, run by Dale Brown. The reason that it's the most ridiculous is because we've had people literally all over the world, some of the top martial arts experts and tactical firearms instructors in the world have told him that what he is doing does not work, and yet he still doubles down on stupid and still tries to convince people that it does work when it truly does not. That is ridiculous to me. But the ones with the biggest followings are probably like the Bujinkan. Like Bujinkan Nijitsu is very culty and it has a huge following. Um, and it's it's just a strange, gross thing that's not really well monitored. I've seen, I've posted videos about guys who like have done some really gross things through the Bujinkan. And the Bujinkan just doesn't seem to care. They seem to just let him in and say, you know what, that's okay. That guy, you know, molested people. But you know what, he's our molester. It's weird. James Harder says, any tips to help sprained elbows or knees? Yes, I have a tip for that. Go talk to a doctor. Philip asks, who is your favorite martial artist from film? Bruce Lee, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Scott Atkins, Donnie Yen, Sammo Hung, or someone else? I'm going to go ahead and say Sammo because he's hung. Ha! Gay! All jokes aside, I think uh, probably uh, Michael Jai White's probably one of my favorites. I love the fact that he's a martial artist, but also has done some serious acting roles. You can see him in movies that aren't martial arts films. And so I think that that's pretty cool. A guy being able to use his talent to be able to do more than just punch and kick people. I think that's pretty inspirational. La Boy says, what martial arts style or system do you teach and why? Also, are there any other martial arts that you'd like to learn in the future? 
So I started martial arts when I was 12 and I started in karate. And the first martial art that I naturally taught was karate because that's what I started in. I started assisting at around 15. I started teaching at around 16, which I agree, way too young. Shouldn't have been teaching. I had no business teaching at that time, but that is the history. I was a kid. I was just going along with it. Um, but, you know, I've, I've also taught boxing and kickboxing because those are things I've, I've competed heavily in. Um, and I've been a striking coach for a couple MMA guys before. Um, I've been brought in to help out with training camps for striking, and so that's something I enjoy teaching as well. As far as other martial arts styles that I'd like to learn, my goal is 10 black belts before I die. So right now I'm working on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm currently a purple belt, super mediocre purple belt, so hopefully I'll get my black belt anywhere between the next 5 to 75 years or so. Negative Headspace on YouTube asks, what kind of other activities, not weightlifting slash training, do you recommend for your adoring fans? For instance, climbing, biking, uh, golf. What are your extra martial hobbies? Adoring fans, they love me. They really love me. To be honest, martial arts consumes a lot of my time. Between running the page and trying to get training in when I can and trying to give martial arts business advice and consulting work, it's pretty busy around here. But if you're going to go out, go do something that's fun. Everybody wants all this functionality in martial arts. What about having fun? Like, isn't that important? I think that it is. I think it's important to go out and blow off steam doing things that you just simply enjoy. And you don't need a rhyme or reason for it either. Just go do some shit because you think that it's fun to do and it makes you feel good. Bed P, which is a funny name, on YouTube says, if you could spend one week training with any gym slash team in the world, who would it be and why? I would go back to Jackson Winklejohn. I've been to Jackson Winklejohn twice now and both times my schedule didn't match up to me being able to actually go and train there. But they were always super friendly to me. It's a very like cool atmosphere to be around. That building has a pulse. Some of the greatest martial artists in the world have trained there. So I'd like to go there. Nick Z on YouTube says, what was it like to meet Master Ken on the Enter the Dojo show? You did great, but he did kind of point out that your technique is BT. I'm going to assume that you mean bullshit. You really survived well, at any rate. I know getting one's groin restomped is no joke. Master Ken has been nothing but cool to me. I've worked with him four times now, and I'd love to work with him more. He's a super funny guy. He's naturally funny off the cuff, super talented. He's a good filmmaker. He's been in a lot of movies, and I don't think people really recognize that, and I think more people should. Hopefully, you guys take the time to go watch Paper Tigers. I loved it. If you haven't gotten to watch it, you should. Master Ken's in that movie. Uh, he, plays a, he kind of plays a Master Ken-type character, so it works out. If you like his stuff, go watch his movie. Oh, and my groin is fine. Everything's going well. Whatever this name is says, should Gracie Blue Belts open schools even if they are a Gracie combative school? On my behalf, I can tell you that after what I went through, to be able to even consider training again, plus my age, I'm not interested in pain that doesn't have masterful reward. I'm going to give you an opinion you probably might not like, all right? I think that it's okay for Blue Belts to open up schools. Here's why. If you don't want to train with that person as a consumer, if they're being honest to you, don't do it. Don't go. It's that simple. It's not for you. And I'm pretty sure that there are even black belts out there that you probably still won't want to train with even though they have black belts. Just because you have a black belt, one, doesn't make you a good person, two, doesn't make you a good instructor, and three, doesn't mean that you understand how to run a school correctly so that way your students are growing to meet their goals. I think that the most important thing in opening up a martial arts school is honesty, being honest with your students. If a blue belt, for instance, you can have your blue belt for a very long time, by the way, but like, let's say it's a blue belt who just got their blue belt, took them a year, year and a half, maybe even two or three years, right? That's two to three years or a year more experience than the white belt who's walking in who knows absolutely nothing. So when they go, if this guy is legitimate or girl, doesn't really fucking matter to me, but if this instructor is legitimate and honest with them, hopefully they'll be able to help them. Now, if you outgrow that instructor, go somewhere else. Maybe this is just the start for you. If you don't like that instructor, don't train there. If they're a blue belt and you don't like training under a blue belt, you want to train under a black belt, then don't train there. Jose asks, I know you're really good at nunchucks. Do you think you could use nunchucks to survive a zombie attack? Like four zombies, walking dead style zombies without getting bit. If I had the option, I wouldn't use nunchucks. I Just because I have a skill and I'm good at them doesn't mean that it's something that I would prefer. It'd be like the equivalent if I was good at ping pong and it's like, you're good at ping pong. So if it was a zombie apocalypse, would you take your ping pong paddle and how, could you survive with just a ping pong paddle? Like... Bitch, I have guns. Like, I just, 
I would just grab a gun. But if I had to use nunchucks, I think I would do okay. <laughs> I think that I would be able to bash my way through a couple zombies um, until they eventually ate my face off. Because unfortunately, that's how zombie apocalypse go. Eventually, everybody gets eaten. So this is my second time doing a Q&A as a video. Most of the time I do Q&As live. So if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, or concerns, you can just join me live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Instagram. And then Tuesdays at 12 o'clock, I do my YouTube lives. My YouTube lives on YouTube, I only save for people who are members, sensei level and above. So if you really wanna go back and watch any of those, you need to become a sensei member or above or catch me live. But I'd like to do more of these. I had such a good time today on my live on YouTube uh, answering martial arts business related questions. It's probably one of my favorite subjects in the martial arts industry to talk about. That's why I like doing these Q&As so that way we can kind of dig into some meat and potatoes kind of stuff and maybe give you guys some advice that'll help you out. My inbox is always open on Instagram. Even if it takes me a while to get to you, I will answer your inbox message. If I haven't answered you and it's been a while, we're talking like a month or two, Best thing to do, send something else. And then it'll bump you to the top of my uh, my feed there. And then I'll be able to answer your question and get to it a lot quicker. Maybe I do more of these. I don't know. Maybe you enjoyed this. Maybe you didn't. I'm not sure. But if you have any questions, do me a favor. Go ahead and drop them in the comment sections below. I'd love to do more of these videos, to be honest, because I think that they're fun. They're easy to do. And all I really have to do is just kind of give you my opinion. And maybe it helps you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's funny. Maybe it's not. Thank you all for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and all that other crap people online tell you to do. Keep the martial arts legit.